What is going on everybody? Uh, in this video we're going to run through how to mount a uh, external hard drive to your Raspberry Pi. Uh, so right here I have a two terabit, two terabit uh, Western Digital external hard drive. Pick that up at Best Buy for maybe 64 bucks on sale. Uh, so I wanted to put it to use so I figure I give my Raspberry Pi a lot of storage. Let's jump right in. Uh, so I'm gonna set that aside for just a moment. I do have a Raspberry Pi 4 up and running next to me. And I'm just going to open a terminal, make that nice and big so we can all see. And I know the username is Gary and I can use the IP address. Uh, but I did also give it a name so I can just get to it uh, using that. All right. Uh, now, I believe this stands for block ID to identify what is currently attached to my Raspberry Pi. Uh, and if we look here, uh, nothing too interesting. We have our, uh, looks like our boot partition and then the root file system. Uh, and if we, uh, well, we could go ahead and uh, also do a F disk dash L. And we would just look through here for anything that's freakishly big. But what we're seeing is 512 meg, not two terabyte. Uh, and then we also have 29.3 gigs. Seems like the SD card. Uh, let me go ahead and I'm going to plug this in now. I have it set a little further to the side because the Ford does have a fan and it is kind of noisy. All right, so if we run that again, we see we have a new drive here at dev SDA1. And if we go ahead and rerun fdisk, uh, we see we do have a 1.8 uh, terabyte drive there. And I guess I should have uh, showed that here, if you look at the, uh, I believe that's block ID, it's an NTFS, which will work fine with our system. Uh, so we should be good to go. One thing to note, I have had it happen before where I'm not sure if it tries to be super helpful, but it will mount that external hard drive automatically under WAC media, uh, the media directory at the root of the file system and you will need to unmount that first. So if we wanna go ahead and mount this, uh, all we should need to do is do sudo mount, and then we're going to use the dev sda1, and where we want to mount it. And actually I should have made that directory first. Uh, I'm just going to uh, make a directory under the mount directory and hard drive data. Uh, probably need sudo for that. All right. And now we should be able to mount it. sudo mount, what do I want to mount? Uh, dev SDA1 and I want to mount that to HD data. All right, now if I switch to the mount directory, I see I do have uh, the HD data. Okay, now this is all well and good, uh, but what happens when I reboot? Well that mount is no longer going to persist. So to do that and have it stay mounted or remount every time I reboot, I'm going to want to put this in uh, FS tab. So if we go ahead, we can just cat that out. Uh, should be ETC FS tab. And we see we have our boot partition and then our regular data and those are in there to be automatically mounted. 
So let's go ahead and if we look here, we could use dev SDA1 here, but the problem with that is, say we move things around and start unplugging and replugging USB cords, it may not be at that same point. So it's best to use the UUID. So I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight that and copy it. And I usually like to just be in my home directory. And I believe I do need to use SATA, sudo. Not sure. Let's try it both ways. Ah, yes, I do need sudo. Uh, you see it says it's unwritable because I do not have permissions as my regular user to edit this. So let's go ahead and just go back to it with sudo. And we should be able to do UUID equals control shift V in the terminal. Uh, I think it's tab delimited. Uh, we could check that just to be sure. Uh, HD data tab NTFS. That should be defaults and then just zero. Zero. All right, that sh looks good. I'm going to control X to save that. And let's see, uh, let's just do a pseudo reboot and we will see if that directory is still mounted there. And we'll give that a moment to come back up. Okay, so that did take just a few moments to come back, uh, but now we can uh, go ahead and change to uh, the mount directory and we see it did indeed automatically mount. Uh, one other thing we could do is we could uh, go ahead and make a symbolic link. So having the external hard drive mounted and automatically uh, mounted each time is great, but depending on what you're going to do with it, it might be inconvenient to be writing your data to WAC mount, WAC HD underscore data. Uh, so we can make a symbolic link in our home directory where we can write to that location and then that data knows, hey, you actually want to write me to this mounted external hard drive. It uh, doesn't necessarily need to be an external hard drive, but uh, I'm just going to wave my hand at that at the moment. Uh, so to do that, we can just do ln for link and we will want where we are going to uh, point our data to and I'm just going to put that into uh, the tilde, my home directory, and then data. And if I ls here I now see data and if I oh, change into data and just say hello and I can just do something like hello from the home directory. Uh, control X, Y to save the buffer, enter to accept the name. And if we look, we do see our file here. And we can also check that that is actually a symbolic link. It is pointing to our mounted hard drive by going to MNT HD data and seeing that the file is there as well. So hopefully this was pretty straightforward and helped some of you out there out. Uh, we showed how to uh, locate hard drives and other storage media that are attached uh, to your Raspberry Pi or Linux system in general. How you could then uh, mount that storage uh, as a mount it into your file system and then you can also persist persist that mount so uh, on shutdowns reboots that is mounted and then of course for convenience how to make a symbolic link so you're not always writing to um, the mount directory or someplace else you have it mounted 
Uh, you could create a directory somewhere convenient for you, whether it be in a project or your home directory, and then just point at that mounted storage. But that's all for this video. Hopefully it helped you out, and I will see you in another one.